This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. The chip shortage continues to hammer automotive production. Toyota announced it's cutting global production in September by 40 percent, or roughly 360,000 vehicles. At the same time, Volkswagen says it may need to slash production as well because it expects the supply of chips in the third quarter to be, quote, very volatile and tight. And lastly, Ford is suspending production of the F-150 at its Kansas City assembly plant for one week, starting next week. Earlier this month, the EPA proposed boosting fuel economy targets. And now NHTSA may increase fines for automakers who don't meet the standards. Under the Obama administration, NHTSA raised fines from $5.50 to $14 for every .1 MPG each vehicle missed the target. That was supposed to go into effect in 2019. However, the Trump administration delayed the rule until 2022. Now NHTSA is asking the public if it should reinstate the increased fines. The auto industry is against it, since it could cost companies hundreds of millions of dollars. But Tesla, on the other hand, is in favor of boosting the fines. It says the credits it's currently selling to automakers are worth less because of the lower fines. The price of new vehicles keeps going up, but so is the cost of owning one. According to a new study from AAA, the average annual cost of owning a new vehicle in the U.S. is nearly 10 grand, or about $805 a month. It looked at 45 models and compared them in six categories, including fuel, maintenance repair tire costs, insurance, license registration taxes, depreciation, and finance charges. The biggest factor in the cost of ownership is depreciation, which accounts for 40% of all the expenses. The AAA says more people purchasing a new vehicle need to factor in the total cost of ownership before buying. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Kia is taking the plug-in version of the Sorento beyond Europe. It's going to arrive in the U.S. in the third quarter, which is around the same time pricing will be announced. Although it did say the vehicle qualifies for a tax credit of over $6,500. That's thanks to its 13.8 kilowatt hour battery pack, which Kia estimates will provide 32 miles of all electric range. It also features a 1.6 liter turbo, mated to a six-speed automatic and a roughly 67 kilowatt electric motor. And that all combines for a total output of 261 horsepower. Standard all-wheel drive will help make the Sorento PHEV attractive to consumers that live in nearly any climate. Other than some special badging and of course a charging port, there's not much else that's unique to the plug-in Sorento. But Kia is not the only automaker expanding a vehicle's lineup. Mercedes is launching an all-terrain version of the C-Class wagon in Europe that has a slightly higher ride height. It's been raised by 40 millimeters, or about an inch and a half. Standard all-wheel drive, larger wheels, and two off-road driving modes will also help it tackle rougher terrain. Design elements unique to the all-terrain include a new grille design, reworked front and rear bumpers, as well as black cladding over the wheel wells and side skirts. The car is going to make its public debut at the Munich Auto Show in September and launch in the market later in the year. 
Genesis revealed its first electric vehicle, a small crossover called the GV60. It rides on the Hyundai Group's eGMP, a dedicated EV architecture that underpins other vehicles like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6. It has styling cues similar to other Genesis vehicles, like thin lighting that's stacked on top of each other and separated by a small sliver of body color and the company's signature trapezoidal grille. But that grille has been shoved way down on the front fascia, which we think is a styling cue to help signify that the GV60 is an EV, but it also gives it a shark nose look. The interior is less luxurious and more techy than other Genesis models. It's clean, and note the lack of any hard edges. Everything is rounded. It also features two small display screens in the doors for the digital outside mirrors. No word yet on when the GV60 will hit the market. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous just like the manufacturing world, but will always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. The age of silicones began at Fokker more than 70 years ago. Whether you're looking for thermal management of battery systems or the protection of electronics, let your innovations be powered by Fokker silicones. Visit us at Vocker.com. E-mobility, powered by Vocker Silicones. Since an EV doesn't need the same amount of cooling as an ICE vehicle, we're starting to see automakers move away from traditional grills. But grills have always been one of the most distinctive elements from one brand to another. Well, Magna's new Mezzo panel could bring some of that uniqueness back. Its surface looks clean and smooth, but that can change instantly with hidden lighting that you can't really see until it's lit. And that can allow automakers to come up with some really creative designs. There's also space for animated lighting, as well as active aero technology and ADAS sensors. Magna did not reveal when we could first see this technology on a production car. Chinese automaker BYD has been on a tear lately. It's seeing record sales in China. It started to export some of its more popular models to places like Australia and Norway. It has new partnerships with Toyota and ride-hailing giant Didi, and its supposed breakthrough blade batteries are rumored to be purchased by Tesla. With all of that going on at the company, the price of its shares tripled in the second half of last year, and that's carrying over into 2021. BYD is now valued at $115 billion, which makes it worth more than Daimler and GM. Can traditional automotive manufacturing make the transition to electric and autonomous cars? Can the Motor City transform itself into the Mobility City? That's what we're going to be talking about on AutoLine After Hours this afternoon, because our guest is Trevor Paul, the Chief Mobility Officer for the state of Michigan. Other topics we may dive into include, is Tesla in real trouble with the feds? Will record car prices today mean fewer sales in the future? And Nissan has the new Z, Toyota has the new GR86. Are they niche or notable? See what John and Gary have to say at 3 p.m. Eastern Time later today. Well, AutoLine viewer Warwick Dundas is back for more. He wanted us to show you these pictures of this car, which was clearly used mostly in racing, but it could be registered for the road. It was made in the early 60s and had two styling generations. Warwick says, quote, if someone gets this, I will give up trying to defeat the Autoline viewer motoring experts. And I have to admit, I'm torn. On one hand, I want you all to get this, and I think you will. But on the other hand, I kind of like this try and stump the Autoline viewers thing we've got going on here. But with that, we wrap up today's show. I hope you have a great rest of your day.
Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over the air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy efficient world. Vocker, creating tomorrow's solutions. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.